Hi, welcome back. My name is Aladino and together with my wife Maya, we are refitting a Cape George Cutter 36. Last week uh, I did a couple of different things, uh, but one thing that I started on was removing the butterfly hatch and uh, we're gonna continue with that one. Butterfly hatches are a notorious source uh, for leaks, so I'm gonna take ours apart, uh, which I haven't uh, yet, and uh, reseal it, and uh, yeah, uh, renew it. Varnish is scraped off, but now stage number two of removing the glass is going horribly. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I think it's bedded with silicone, and second, I cracked uh, one glass. And from how it's going, I might crack all four. Uh, so yeah, we have to order new glass. I don't know what's the bigger evil, honestly, silicone or cracked glass, but so. I have some updates for you. We've been busy on our little phones, making calls, organizing things. So Aladino just ordered some new glass for the butterfly hatch. Um, three out of the four panels cracked taking them out, which, you know, that's how it goes. It's really hard to take those things out. Um, fortunately, we found a place nearby, so that's all done and dusted. And then uh, <laughs> we got some bad news about our Mirka sander. So a bit of backstory here. We have this really nice sander that we use all the time. I don't even want to think about how many hours we've put onto this sander. And unfortunately something burned out, but it is still under warranty. So we sent it in for repair. So we called asking for an update and they said that they need to replace the motor and motors are back ordered until the end of the month. And it was right now in, in real time, the beginning of the month. So that's a month without the Mirka and that's pretty bad news. So I called and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to get things done here because I know officially they don't give out replacements. Um, but I called being like, can we please have a replacement? And I really was, was polite but firm in that request. And it seems like we might be getting a replacement Mirka sent out. He said he'll confirm it tomorrow. He has to confirm with some higher ups, but he can probably make that happen, so. I'm very pleased, very, very pleased. A month without this sander really was gonna cause quite a few problems. We do have a DeWalt quarter sheet sander. We have a few other options, but they really just, you know, don't compare to this one. The Mirka sander is super expensive. You should only buy one if you're gonna be doing a lot of sanding, but we do do a lot of sanding and it sure does make a difference. And Aladino, meanwhile, what are you working on? The last two portal frames are being glued. Awesome. And while I'm at it, I'm also doing something else, uh, which is the new gasket inside the ports has never been glued in. We put a new, new, uh, but they're not glued. So now as I take them off, you see some of it stays on the, fr on the outside. And yeah, that was a quick job just before leaving. Exactly. The so I'm also gluing this in at the same time. Uh, yes. You can see it over here. This is what it looks like when they're off. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm doing is gluing the joint together, like here it isn't yet. Yeah. So that's the first thing. And then I fill it with Sikaflex. And yeah. then I made this little custom spreader, put it in there, spread it evenly so it gets on the sides and on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then smush it in. Brilliant. So I'm doing that too. Mm -hmm. 
Meanwhile, today I'm going to finish sanding the frame for the butterfly hatch. Um, I didn't finish it yesterday because my whole body was cramping up. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I was so young when we started this boat refit and now I'm getting old. Such is the way of things. But you know what? The benefit of age, because I am quite pleased about that phone call I just had. I'm getting better at, at being firm in what I, what I need. Because um, I think a few years ago, I would have called and I said, can we please have a replacement because a month is too long to wait. And he would have said no. And I would have said, oh, all right then. But this time I, I persisted and look what happened. <laughs> Let's wait until the reply comes tomorrow. Now you've been bragging for half an hour. They will confirm tomorrow. <laughs> well, my confidence certainly doesn't come from an outside source, I'll tell you that much. Maya has an update that <laughs> not only she is very pleased about. Ha! Ye of little faith, literally five minutes after we filmed that clip, got a phone call from Mirka. He was so nice and so apologetic, and he said he's sending us a brand new Mirka in five to seven business days. Wow. It'll be here. Well, you see, Mirka is awesome. I never said something bad about Mirka. Very nice. Anyway, so, so I'm far, very pleased. Customer and customer service has been excellent. If I hadn't called, though, we wouldn't have it. Totally. Or well, sorry. that's my Swiss way. If they say so, then it must be for a reason and uh, one uh, wait. Yeah, Waits. so you got to get more into the Canadian way of things. Just okay. ask a few times because then they'll finally go fine. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Yay. No, I wanted to do this unnoticed, but Maya caught me oh, no. in disguise. No. Oh, it's just some ugly little emergency work. Yeah. Why is it ugly? Oh, it's so ugly. There is an open seam and I'm just filling it and it's going to be forever visible. But it is a hatch frame, which is covered by a hatch most of the time. And, uh, but yeah. It just works and um, it has already been filled, but it was filled with f flexible caulking and that is not my preferred method because that allows movement to continue to happen, uh, which will continuously crack the varnish that we put over it. So I'm hoping that epoxy instead makes it one frame with no more movement. Um, yeah, tomorrow hopefully I can uh, sand this clean and then uh, we'll put varnish over it. We are ready to varnish. Everything is sanded and cleaned and taped and uh, now we're gonna start applying PP Extra varnish. That's the two-part varnish. Uh, I really like it uh, because you can put on many coats in a day, uh, up to three if the temperature is right. Uh, so you can really build uh, thickness, which is what gives ultimate uh, protection. Now the butterfly hatch is down on the table. That one's not ready yet. Uh, it needs a bit more sanding. It has more surfaces and corners, uh, but I really wanna start applying some coats here. So yeah, I'll do that.
As you can see, I just hung up the bowsprit and that is because I'm getting ready to coat it. Ah, this is the one piece where I admit uh, it would have probably been quicker if I built one from scratch. Um, quite a bit of work has gone into it. The top was very weathered, it had a crack, um, it had some soft spots. So we basically took off a third, uh, leaving these little uh, brackets in place though, because uh, these support uh, the platforms that go on each side. And then we put on a new plank just over top. So that was the big thing in the beginning. And then another thing that happened is I put in uh, GRP tubes, uh, some here horizontally, and that is where the platform gets through bolted. Is it the, st yeah, the stay sail stay uh, goes on. So I've also put in GRP tubes here vertically. These are through bolted through the breast hook. There is one GRP tube going through here, and this is part of the anchor roller. And ultimately, uh, we have six new through bolts here uh, that didn't exist before. And these will be uh, for a platform that will bolt the bowsprit down uh, because now it won't be supported by a Samson post anymore. Uh, and instead, six bolts, well, with these two, it's eight, will uh, compress it. Uh, uh, holding it to the deck and be bolted through the king plank on the inside. Also, if you look at the very uh, end of the bowsprit, you can see that um, it's not complete yet. Um, I was going back and forth whether to cut the bowsprit and give it a nice curvature at the aft end uh, so that it looks pleasing. But uh, I, I, I may want to add something in the future. Uh, which is not a Samson post, but just a block of wood uh, that could house a really big cleat. So we'll see towards the end of the project what pieces of wood we have and we can always add that later. But that's why I just, I'm leaving the bowsprit cut square now with that little thing. But yeah, now to the coating world of things. It's a debate uh, whether to epoxy things before varnishing or not. The West System handbooks that are out there, I mean, they already did this uh, in the 80s, uh, so it's not that new, but it's just, uh, there is a lot of debate around that. And I don't have a personal opinion yet. Um, on Magic Carpet 1, we used penetrating epoxy, and that was following the recommendation of a very uh, reputable yard that does things that way. And I was very happy um, in doing so, but I don't have the, the, the gained experience yet because uh, the boat has only been used for one season after that, but I think it is beneficial. In combination, varnish and epoxy, then they each last longer because the epoxy acts as a uh, strengthening in a way. It allows the wood to expand and contract less. Uh, it's also more waterproof uh, and therefore you have, well, with less motion, you have less cracks, which are the annoying thing. And instead the varnish gives UV protection. I think they really uh, help each other out. Um, I guess the con is if you ever have to refinish it again, epoxy is harder to strip, but it's really not that big of a deal with a heat gun uh, and a good scraper, everything comes off. So I didn't do epoxy on everything that needed varnish. Uh, some things I just kept simply and I'm just varnishing, but I think the bowsprit, um, I want to give it that extra protection and uh, make it hopefully uh, last longer that way. So first coat, uh, first two coats or maybe more are going to be epoxy. And yeah, uh, just keep in mind whenever doing these things, uh, sometimes they're also frowned upon because it is uh, finicky work. Um, if the epoxy has cured, then there is no way around uh, but sanding it uh, you, uh, to get good mechanical adhesion afterwards. With some epoxies and some varnishes, when they're still tacky, uh, you can continue with the other product and get good ad adhesion chemically and uh, mechanically. Yeah, it's all in the prep really keep an eye out for amine uh, of course the better is to use low blush uh, epoxy uh, but just also the conditions uh, temperature humidity uh, those really um, help uh, with getting amine amines or less scrub it with water uh, warm water and soap um, if you're not sure uh, sand it really well so yeah i'll uh, get ready and uh, and start
Letting go with reservations But they won't hold me back any longer I'm pushing through the complications Cause everybody says they make you stronger I've been lost inside my head for longer than I care to. Over several days, I kept going back and forth on varnishing the hatches, the hatch frames, and the bowsprit. We have also almost finished applying the kiwi grip, uh, but I just ran short uh, to finish the bow. Uh, but now we have some more, so we're gonna finish that up as well. Moving my feet across this floor, gonna walk right through that open door. It's been a really good week of uh, progress on the exterior here uh, with the mission of uh, waterproofing it all in case the shed comes down, well it will eventually. Uh, just a little wrap up, um, the handrails are on, uh, those um, look really good and I'm happy that those are in place, uh, that is some 80 holes less <laughs> <laughs> or something along those lines. Uh, same with the winches, uh, the winches and the cleats, those are installed now, super happy about that, less holes and more hardware where it belongs. Uh, the porthole frames, uh, those tie everything together and less loose pieces, uh, now they're in place, uh, very happy about that. And then also this week we did lots of varnishing. So the hatches and the frames, they have four coats on them right now. Uh, and now it's time to let it cure, uh, give it an in-between sanding and then continue with some more coats. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to build up too much. Uh, you have to clean it up every now and then, so to speak. The bowsprit is getting some varnish on down below. And the bow of the boat. And the bow of the boat is kiwi gripped. Yeah. So that's this all... This should really be three episodes. That's not a week. <laughs> that's been two weeks. It, it has been a bit longer than a week in, re yeah. in, in reality. Uh, so yeah, just applied Kiwi Grip, um, so we still cannot walk on it, uh, but I'm super, super pleased. It looks great. Yeah. And oh, uh, I didn't mention it while I was doing it, um, since it was a time lapse, but 
it got me sweating. Um, it took up two liters, and that's all we had. And it took up every last bit of it. Oh, did it? I had to squeeze out the roller uh, to get enough. Uh, yeah, so I was sweating towards the end, thinking that we might not have enough. Uh-oh. Yeah, but luckily uh, I was able to uh, squeeze it out and still get a consistent uh, look. Good. Yeah, so that was... Uh, that was uh, that is really really nice. Uh, very glad that is done. Uh, so we let that cure now. And something I'm really excited for next week is uh, we got to install some of the cap rails, right? Yeah. So my dad has been working a bit on some of those, so he's going to come and um, bring us our cap rails. Totally. So and excited about the we'll cap show rails. you what he's been doing on them. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Well, All thank right. you so much, everyone, for we'll being see here. See you next week, then. See you next week. And I'm going to do a quick wrap up. Huge thank you to, for all of you watching. Uh, extra big thanks to our patrons. You guys really make it all possible. We publish real time updates on Patreon every week. And extra big thanks to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen. See you next Friday. See you next Friday.